1987, I went there just as a tourist and as a mountaineer. And we were there for about a month. Didn't know hardly anything about Tibet. We went to the Tibetan side of Everest, not trying to summit, just going to get as high as we could on Everest. And we spent a month doing this and having a blast. We hitchhiked to Laza. There were a lot of Chinese immigrants coming into Laza. And my first impression of Laza was actually that there were more Chinese than Tibetans. I was looking around when we got off our ride, wondering where all the Tibetans were. There was a lot of tension in Laza. And the Chinese were denouncing the Dalai Lama for being a splittist and trying to split the motherland and they were blaring this on the loudspeakers that he was proposing this peace plan in Washington. Three days later the Chinese government uh, in power responded by publicly executing two Tibetan nationals in a stadium in Lhasa and they not only did this they forced 15,000 people to watch this. Some monks in one of the monasteries started a demonstration. They had homemade Tibetan flags and they were chanting China out of Tibet and free Tibet. With the preservation of Buddhism in mind, I got up and shouted and the monks shouted and raised their fists with me. I was born after Tibet was lost to the Chinese. As I grew up, I realized that we were oppressed. They had wronged us and stolen our land. We Tibetan demonstrators didn't have any kind of weapons with us. We were just raising slogans, free Tibet. We shouted, long live the Dalai Lama, and read Chinese out of Tibet. When the riots started, all the tourists were caught totally unaware. We walked into what was a massacre. The Chinese were firing at the Tibetans the same way we light firecrackers on New Year's. They used tear gas, and the monks and the people cried. A lot of people were wounded, and many were arrested and put in the trucks. They were beaten a lot, and some of the monks were all covered in blood. There were a number of casualties that I witnessed personally. The first was a man, dazed, carrying his son, a ten-year-old boy, in his arms. I ran up to him, saw immediately that the child had been shot um, in the chest, reached around to his back and saw that there was an exit wound in the back. The child literally died in my hands. There was nothing that I could do. Tibetans just kept grabbing me to take me to someone to take their picture, someone who had been killed or injured. As the police started shooting at the crowd, their vehicles were being overturned. The gasoline that spilled out was lit on fire. The, their jeeps exploded. Smoke is pouring into the air. And before you knew it, the whole police station was going up. The prisoners at this time were taken into back rooms, and you could hear gunfire going off inside the police station. And I remember a woman screaming vividly, they're killing our monks. At one point, we noticed a monk running into the door of the police station to try to help the monks escape who had been imprisoned, who had been arrested earlier that morning. And later we found out that was Champa Tenzin. Champa Tenzin, holding hands with another monk, ran into the burning police station, made it through the first rooms, which were collapsing already, into the back rooms, was able to start enough of a fracas with the police that some people managed to escape. About a half hour later, he came out of the building and his arms just flesh was just and skin was hanging off his arms he was charred totally charred it's the most incredible thing that i had ever seen because he was still alive and he was raising his hand up above his head a woman put a white silk scarf around his neck and he was lifted onto the shoulders of the crowd and carried through the barcor as a hero he was lapsing in and out of consciousness at this time because the pain was so intense for him to bear. Hundreds of people were weeping at this. You couldn't see this without crying. Champa Tenzin was taken to prison for several months after that and tortured. I'll never forget going back to the Jokong and seeing Champa Tenzin. I was amazed at how light he was, at how 
There was no animosity in his eyes whatsoever. Here was a man who had forgiven his captors, who had forgiven his torturers, and who had dedicated his life to the freedom of his people. After I got out of Tibet, I heard that Champa Tenzin had been killed. Monks saw Champa Tenzin with a noose around his neck. His entire face and body was beaten and bloody. He was lying on a bed, and the noose was not tied to anything. So it was very obvious that he was killed. Tibet has been called the altar of the earth. Here in the thin air, more than 14,000 feet above sea level, surrounded by the tallest peaks on earth, the power of the divine seems present everywhere. For centuries, Tibet remained a mystery to the outside world. Legends told of a paradise on earth, hidden somewhere behind the great mountains. Guarded to the south by the colossal peaks of the Himalayas. Impenetrable river gorges in the east. And huge expanses of windswept deserts across the west and north. The great Tibetan plateau, its peaks thrusting five miles into the sky, is the largest geologic feature on Earth. It is an immense territory that stretches for a thousand miles over an area the size of Western Europe. These hard facts of geography sharply define the borders of ethnic Tibet. When I was little, we had yaks, sheep and horses, lots of them. They were on the hills, and the hills were full of flowers. Horses, you know horses? I loved riding horses. As I remember, all the older people would be chanting prayers all the time and the children would be happily playing around. I don't remember any troubles. We practiced our religion, we had our rights, and we lived happily. My youth was the happiest time of my life. I guess young people all over the world behave as we did. We danced, sang, fell in love, grew jealous, showed off and did innumerable other silly and inconsequential things. We expressed feelings of the heart through songs, and our people seemed to have an endless store of these. The most pleasant occasion was the time of marriage. 